aux années 40, on a eu un autre épisode d'un autre ici au Canada qui a refusé d'accepter les réfugiés. À l'époque, on appelait cette politique « rien c'est trop, non est too many ». À l'époque, on a eu des réfugiés juifs qui, qui sont des réfugiés de le régime nazi en Allemagne et des autres pays qui a pris le bateau, qui a essayé de quitter le Canada, a eu une politique euh, à cette époque qui était plus ou moins de refuser ces gens. Alors, pour parler de cet épisode honteuse dans l'histoire du Canada en anglais, on va avoir un membre de la communauté juive ici à Montréal, Avi Grenadier, qui va parler de cet épisode. Avi. Hi, uh, Avi, I'm here with a group of radical and Jews. With 60 million displaced people around the world this year, we are at the most severe refugee crisis since World War II, and borders continue to be lethal. There is no doubt that the conservative Harper government has blood on its hands with its explicit anti-refugee, anti-migrant legislation and discourse over the last decade. Political parties across the spectrum are making claims about Canada's humanitarian legacy. But let's look at how Canada positioned itself while World War II and the Nazi genocide unfolded in Europe. From 1933 to 1948, Canada accepted only 5,000 Jewish refugees the lowest of any Western industrial nation. Liberal Prime Minister at this time, Mackenzie King, was clear about what he thought about Jewish refugees coming to Canada. He said, quote, We must seek to keep this part of the continent free from unrest and from too great an intermixture of foreign strains of blood. He didn't want to create a, quote, internal problem in an effort to meet an international one. Mackenzie King warned that allowing in Jewish refugees would cause riots and threaten the unity of Canada. Policies to keep out refugees backed up this rhetoric, and one immigration official was asked how many Jews should be permitted into Canada, and he replied, none is too many. The situation was very different, however, when Canada needed migrants for cheap, exploited, dangerous labor at the end of the 19th century. Jews and other migrants and refugees from around the world were allowed in as part of Canada's industrialization and colonization of indigenous lands. So when politicians wax and wane about Canada's legacy, let's remember that it has always been defined by the parameters of racism and colonialism and the interests of capitalism. The history of none is too many is now rhyming with the bigoted couplets of Stephen Harper, Quebecois politicians and his accomplices who have done all they can to drum up anti-Arab and Islamophobic rhetoric, who have no problem using conditions of slavery in their temporary foreign worker program while denying status, deporting, and jailing refugees. As Jews, along with all diasporic peoples, we can and must build across difference, share our resources, and replace dehumanization with a solidarity that is compassionate, fierce, and far-reaching. Alan, Galit, and Rihanna should be here. So should all the courageous people forced to resist and cross artificial borders. We say with all our hearts, with all our soul, infused with the strength of the Abishter, none is never too many. No human being is illegal. Canada is illegal. Yeah.